goes on. We can talk a lot more about that on get our video number four about how uh, abortion is murder based on the thinking that evolution is true. It's a crazy idea. Hitler said, this new state, Germany, will give its youth to no one. We're going to raise the youth the way we want them to be raised. There was a man in Skokie, Illinois, that shot and killed a doctor. When they asked him, why did you kill this doctor? He said, because he's making blue-tinted contact lenses for people and he's diluting the Aryan beauty. Folks, the Aryan supremacy idea is not dead. There are still white supremacists all over the country. And I know I'm in the South. <laughs> well, get over it, okay? Nobody's better because of the color of their skin. Right. Hitler tried to hide behind the idea that Christianity justified what he was doing. This excellent book by Marvin Lutzer at uh, Moody Bible Press on Hitler's cross about how he tried to make people think it's okay because God had told him to kill all these people. Hitler, one of his propaganda pictures showed him walking out of a church with a cross over his head. He was a liar. Do you know they had Nazi baptisms? Hitler secretly, though, hated Christianity. He said, I regard Christianity as the most fatal, seductive lie that ever existed because Christianity teaches all nations are of one blood. You're not better than anybody because of the color of your skin. That's what Christianity teaches. But they had Nazi baptisms, Nazi altars. Just unreal what Hitler did, trying to hide behind the guise of Christianity. Now, the Japanese also thought that they were a superior race. The Japanese textbooks taught their kids for 30 or 40 years. When, when, when Darwin's book came out in 1859, when it was translated to Japanese several years later, the Japanese bought it up like crazy and said, wow, this is a perfect theory. They sucked it right in because it goes right along with the religions they already had there in Japan. And they said, wow, one race is superior. I bet it's the Japanese. They had special studies where they studied people and they said the Japanese don't have as much hair on their body, which proves they've ascended further from the apes. And they said they have a mildy, milder body odor and they were the superior race that deserved to rule the world. People say, when I, when I say I think evolution is largely responsible for World War II, they look at me like I'm nuts. But folks, that's exactly the case. Evolution is also the foundation philosophy for the New World Order. We cover lots on this on our college class, uh, CSE 103, where my 17-hour seminar is stretched out to 60 hours, where we chased every rabbit and kicked every dog that walked by. <laughs> that's a whole lot of stuff on our college course there. The United Nations has plans for a one-world government. The United Nations wants to establish a UN military force that can intervene in inter internal events in any country. They want to eliminate the veto power of the United States. They want to give the UN jurisdiction over the Earth Commons. That means the United Nations decides who owns, you know, the rivers and everything, everything in Earth. This is from a speech given by the Secretary General in September of 2000. They've already divided up the world into ten regions. You know, for years I was taught the European Roman, the old Roman Empire is going to be revived in the last days, and we're going to have the ten, you know, the, the vision in the book of Daniel. Ten kings are going to get together and give their power to one king. And then I think we've been maybe missing something here, brother. Maybe it's not ten countries in Europe going to unite. Maybe it's ten regions of the world. Maybe this last vision of Daniel was the whole world uniting. They are making plans for a new world order. There are some extremely wealthy, powerful people making plans to rule the world, like Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> They're out there trying to take over the planet, and God's up in heaven laughing about it. Psalms chapter 2, the psalmist said, Why do the heathen rage? The people imagine vain things. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. God sees all their plans for a one-world government, and he's laughing about it. Now, in the meantime, I think we're going to have to go through, through some really hard times down here, folks. People say, well, God's going to get us out of here before the tribulation. Oh, tell that to the Chinese Christians and the Russian Christians and the Egyptian Christians that have been killed here and those in Sudan, where they've killed hundreds of thousands in Africa just because they're Christians just in the last 10 or 15 years. Boy, if any country ever deserved the judgment of God, it's America. Amen. And I think it's coming soon to a city near you. The United Nations has plans to tax the world. They want to, we'll be paying a tax if they have their way, to the United Nations. They want to get the UN authority to regulate international commerce. They want to control food. They understand full well that the production and distribution of food is the way to control the world. United Nations has plans to establish a new seat of power in the UN called the People's Assembly. 
It'll consist of representatives from nations, but also representatives from non-government organizations. Just organizations can be, have a seat in there. Interesting. They want to have jurisdiction over all, non, over all nation states. They certainly want to have jurisdiction over all the churches. And many churches have already stuck their head in the noose by becoming incorporated. And they don't realize what they've done. There's a good book if you want to read more on that. You can get it from our website. Right. Or right here in our bookstore, In Caesar's Grip, about how the incorporation process, 501c3, has trapped churches where they cannot speak out on certain topics. Man, a hundred years ago, the politicians were scared stiff of the pastors because they just get up there and preach. You know, Senator Jones is a whoremonger. <laughs> well, today, if you talk about politics, they'll jerk your 501c3 status. And so Christians say, well, we can't talk about certain topics in the pulpit. Well, then you're not serving God. If you're a prophet of God, you, tell, you say what God told you to say. If it hair lips the devil, then tough. <laughs> it goes back to the two basic philosophies of government. You know, evolution based on man's opinion and creation based on laws come from the Creator. He gives us rights to have churches. He gives us rights to speak, our, to speak the truth. Our founding father said, when it comes in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the bands which have connected them to another. They said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain rights. They kept talking about the right of the people because of the fact they were created by God. When you get a bunch of people together who believe they were created, they don't make good slaves. They're going to throw the tea in the harbor and start a big war. And so the guys who would like a new world order are fighting very hard to not let creation into the schools because the schools are their primary method of teaching their evolution theory, which says rights come from government, not from God. This fellow said, fundamentalists have no, fundamentalist parents have no right to indoctrinate their children in their beliefs. We are preparing their children for the year 2000 in life in a global one world society, and those children will not fit in. They want to prepare our kids for a new world order. And boy, it's working, folks. 75% of kids from Christian homes that go to secular schools lose their faith after one year of college. There's a great book called The Medusa File by Craig Roberts, excellent book on the government cover-ups of all sorts of things that have been covered up. Do you know how many prisoners of war were left behind when we fought World War II, when we fought in the Japanese theater, and when we fought Vietnam? Those prisoners of war were taken off to be um, coal miners up in the Soviet Union and in China. They just disappeared into slave labor camps. And some leaders in our government knew about it and said, oh, it's not worth messing with, just let them go. There are some still alive over there. Read this book, The Medusa File, if you want to get more on that. If you want to understand the conspiracy that's right now Satan is using to control the world, there are so many good books you can read about this. I've got several on the table here. There are different groups with their smoke-filled rooms trying to control the world. There's a meeting. <coughs> There's a committee of uh, 300 Jewish financiers, all masters of lodges, who rule the world according to Protocols of Zion. Now, I get crit criticized for recommending the Protocols of Zion. I understand the book was written so that it would, if it was found, it would be blamed on the Jews. It's actually the bankers. But they kept calling it, they said, wrote it as if the Jews are going to do this and the Jews are going to do that. I tell you what, you read it. It's all, come, it's all come true in the last hundred years. And people say, that's a bad book, Brother Hoven. Well, yeah, it is, but it, it reveals their plan for the world, but it was not written by Jews. It was written by financiers, money lenders, with, and shows their plan to rule the world. There's a book called The Committee of 300, showing the 300 top people who really make the decisions on this planet to decide when we're going to have a war and when we're going to have a depression and a recession. Get more on that. See, a lot of these crises that we face are man-made, intentionally made. I don't know if you saw the video of the airplane flying into the Twin Towers, but there's a video on the internet you can watch showing an F-15 flying right beside it, guiding them into the Twin Towers. You gotta, they slow the tape down and show it frame by frame. Interesting. I'm not sure what all happened that day, folks. I'm not sure if anybody's sure what all happened that day. But they will develop a crisis just so they can get their goals accomplished. Some of these guys would like a new world order, a one world government. And they're not against killing three or 4,000 people if it helps their cause like blow up the Oklahoma City building just so we can, you know, eliminate the militia groups that are getting a little out of hand, you know? Or just so we can get more homeland security measures. I can't even carry my pocket knife on the plane now. <laughs> well, the Civil War was deliberately done in order to get more toward a one-world government. So was World War I. The 1929 Depression was deliberately caused 
to get people to come in and get a social security number, which, by the way, is a voluntary system. The Cuban Missile Crisis was deliberate. See, the, the Russians, they have a technique. They say, we'll take two steps forward and one step back, and everybody thinks we retreated. They wanted a missile base. They wanted a military base in Cuba. So they put in a military base and missiles. Kennedy huffed and puffed about the missiles, you know, the big missile crisis in 62, and they took the missiles out, we think, and left the military base. Two steps forward, one step back, they're further toward the goal. They've done that all over the world. Oklahoma City was blown up by apparently some terrorists, obviously, but it wasn't the truck bomb in 